Hey there folks, Gary Bradley here from Creative Frontiers in partnership with Hydro Creative to bring you this episode. I'm going to show you how you can expedite the whole process of creating engaging artwork for posting onto multiple social media platforms. Because let's be honest, it is very time consuming and if you want to get complete control over how your brand looks and the message points, then Photoshop is great for that. Uh, other applications like Illustrator are good as well but actually pulling the artwork together, having it in one central place and then uh, executing that variations of it across Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, for example, as I say, is time consuming. Um, but this is one Photoshop file. This is kind of where we're heading to. So you can and have done for a while now in Photoshop, have the ability to create one Photoshop document with multiple pages in. It came in around the time of responsive web design when that was really sort of taking off in answer to the fact that you will need to create designs for screen on multiple devices. But it also actually works really well if you want to turn that into a, a file, a template effectively to post onto social media. So I'm going to start off and I'm going to build this file complete from scratch. I will um, provide for you in the show notes all of the uh, images and the logo so you can build along with me and create this artwork and have a go yourself if you wish to. Obviously, you could create your own artwork by using your own branded content and colors. So without further ado, let's dive in and get started. So I'm going to go to the file menu and then choose new and we're going to build a completely new document. Now, being that this is intended for screen viewing, I'm going to go to the web preset at the top in the new doc document dialog box. It is, again, one of those things whereby the new document dialog box tends to look really quite small when you first open it up. I would tend to say on first, if you haven't expanded the size of the new document dialog box, do take your cursor down to the bottom right corner and click and drag and pull this out so that you can see all of the options because some of the kind of the, the canvas color options down here are hidden at first. You don't want to miss those. So when you build a new file, you go to the most appropriate format here. It's going to be web. Oh, it will be screen in there. Um, so web at the top, then you get a, a bunch of presets um, in here. It doesn't really matter for this project, which one we start off with. I'm just going to click on, say, for example, here, the one that's active by default web most common. This will show us that this is 1366 pixels wide with a, a height of 768 pixels tall. Because ultimately what you do is once you've clicked on one of those presets, you go over towards the right hand side and you do the rest of the work on the right hand side of the dialog box. So here, untitled one will become ultimately the file name. So if I click inside of there, I'm going to call this um, SM for social media underscore templates like so. And then the idea being is that this will be a template file. Once you've built it, it makes the process of creating any other social media files for the next week or the next month far, far easier because you've done 80% of the work. And then in terms of the width and height, then this is the point where you need to be exacting about these values because it's really important that we output to the right kind of sizes. So in my example, I'm going to show you four different sizes. There's going to be one for Twitter, one for Facebook and two for Instagram. So the example for Twitter is, and I'm going to start off with that one, I'm going to swipe across the width and I'm going to type in 1024 and then hit the tab key to go down to the height field and then type in 512 in there. All measurements in pixels. And this will be kind of a, a one of your kind of um, standard image share posts uh, inside of Twitter in the timeline. Um, in terms of resolution, you can leave that set to what it is at 72. That's fine. As long as the pixel width and height are fine, we're all good to go. Obviously, the, the width is uh, greater than the height. Therefore, it's activated the landscape format. And this is the crucial bit, artboards. So this will allow us to create multiple pages of artwork. Traditionally, this wasn't in the new document dialog box. This will allow us to start with one artboard and then we could add additional artboards as we move along. And down at the bottom, then we definitely want to set the colors to be RGB because we're outputting to a screen device. Background color contents, well, you've got white, black, background color, which will be what the current background color is in your tools panel on the left hand side of the screen. Transparent or custom, I'm just going to stick with white in there. Um, and then for the rest of it, I'm going to leave it as it is in here. Um, you could choose something like uh, Adobe RGB for the color profile when you output to the web it will output to sRGB. So we get consistent colors across 
lots of different devices depending on you know how old they are um, and then from here I'll leave everything else as it is and go down to the bottom and click on create which gives us a tiny little window of artwork in here and again the if you've never used artboards the really weird thing about this is that there's actually a word outside of the artboard so this in many senses does act like a traditional Photoshop document but you can drag and move your pages around so here you'll notice that the name Artboard 1, very generic. If I hover my cursor over the name Artboard 1 and left click, you'll notice now it activates the actual Artboard. In the Layers panel over here, then it gives us uh, the name Artboard 1. I'm going to name this, and this is really important because, again, when you're outputting to social media, rather than exporting a bunch of files with random names, if you get the name of the Artboard right in here, that will save you having to rename the files because Photoshop will output them with the name of the artboard on here. So I'm going to double click on the name of artboard one. I'm going to call this uh, tweet underscore zero one and then press return. You'll notice now that the name changes in here and also the artboard in here. Also, when the artboard is active, you see the, the kind of the transform frame around the outside. These things are widgets. I'm going to come to those a little bit later on. But also this activates the artboard tool at the top of the tools panel. So if, you, if you're looking for the move tool afterwards, you'll have to click and hold down on the artboard tool. And there is the move tool right at the top of the tools panel as it's always been, but just hidden now because we've got artboards active. You'll also notice in the options bar that we have options up here for the size. So you could always change this to a different size that we saw many of them in the new document dialog box. If I click away from that menu, you've got the width and the height in here, which you can change the background color as well. And so from here, then it's a case of just filling this with content. So to make sure it lands inside of the artboard, I'm going to click on this kind of generically named layer in here called layer one. And Photoshop has to have some kind of content in the layers panel. That's why it's just put that in there for us. And then I'll go to file and I'll choose place embedded. Now I'd say place embedded because you can choose to place a linked file and Photoshop will look back and keep a live link to a, a, an image in a folder somewhere. So if that's what you want, then you could do that. I would tend to say that if you are creating a copy of this template file and moving it around a server or a desktop and sharing it between colleagues, you may well want to choose place embedded. So it, it keeps a, a physical stored um, version of whatever you import into Photoshop in this file. And it doesn't require that you copy any links with that and supply it to somebody. So everything's in this Photoshop file. So I'll click on place embedded. Now on the desktop here, I have a folder called posting. And if I double click to browse into there, I can just take a look through the images that I want to choose to drop into this first artboard. Kind of as a, as a background, really. We're trying to evoke some kind of inspirational artwork with some kind of message. Um, from here, then, I want to choose something that does have a nice kind of landscape feel because that's obviously the format for the Twitter post. So if I click on, say, Beach 20 in there and then hover over and click on Place, by default, Photoshop will uh, drop that into your artboard uh, to make sure that all of the artwork fits inside of there. Uh, it will scale it proportionately. So you'll notice that here in the options bar up at the top for the width, which is 22.85%, uh, also is the height as well. Um, that is far smaller than, than it actually really was. So if you do see it appear in the artboard at this sort of size, don't panic. It's not the actual size that you're, you're limited to. You can make it bigger. And as you can see here, obviously 22%, we can make this image a lot bigger. So um, I'm going to just hover my cursor over one of the, to the top right handle here of the bounding box, hold down the Alt key and then hold down the Shift key to scale that out like so. Uh, just a little bit bigger than the artboard, just to give me a little bit of wiggle room to be able to move this around and juxtapose it just a touch. And then when I'm done, you can hit the return key in the keyboard. And then I will just use, because I do have at the top of the tools panel, my move tool active, I'm going to tap the cursor keys on the keyboard just to nudge that towards the right hand side in there like so. So I get the surfer just in shot. And there you see, I've just run out of image. So I'm just going to tap back with the left cursor key just to nudge that back. So we get the surfer on screen in there. And then if I zoom in using the scroll wheel, because I've set that up on the mouse to scroll in, obviously at this moment in time, I am viewing this image. It will look a little bit pixelated because the, the scale here is 280%. I have my image filling all the artboard and I'll move my layers panel to the side. I notice now that that generic layer called layer one has disappeared because we now have some kind of printable or some kind of content that we've added inside of here. So the link there, Beach 20, 
This is now embedded into this document. Um, it's not linked back to the original file on the desktop, but it is a smart object. So the beauty of this is you could scale this image up and down. It gives you great flexibility. So that's the icon for a smart object. Um, and in here, they need to bring a logo in. So I'll go to file and I'll choose again. I'm going to choose place embedded. If you find that you are working off a server where your branded content, your logo, is stored in one place and it doesn't move, then you could, again, it's one of those options where you could choose place linked. I'm going to choose place embedded in this case. And then from here, I have a logo, Wildco logo. Click on place, drops it then, uh, shows me the dialog box, first of all, for open uh, as a smart object. This is an Illustrator file. Um, so I'm going to pick, I'm going to go for the white one in here, um, which looks completely empty because in Illustrator, the, the, um, the art boards, as they're called as well, the background canvas as, as such is white and the logo is white, so nothing really appears on screen. Um, and then with that done, clicked on artboard number seven, click on OK. It drops a version of that artwork. Don't worry about the, what the quality looks like in here. It is, um, it's a lot better quality than this. It's just a low quality preview. So if I go up to the uh, link at the top up there, link the width and height together, I'm going to scale this down to say, let's go for 20%, probably too small. Swipe over that and then uh, tap the up cursor key on the keyboard to increase that in size. I think at 30%, that's probably about right for now. So I'll, I'll go over and click on the tick or you could hit the return key on the keyboard. And then notice we get this nice full scale quality version. And again, it is embedded in this document, but it's a smart object so you can scale it up and down. From here then, I'll click and drag and then position this over a darker part of the image there. Got the branded content in there. We now need some kind of um, inspirational image. So I'm going to go to the window menu, go down the list to character to open up the character panel. And I'm going to use a font called Smoothie. This is an Adobe font uh, formerly known as Typekit. That's been rebranded in the last uh, year. So I'm going to pick up my type tool by tapping the T key on the keyboard. And then I'm going to hover my cursor over the image window, click and hold down the mouse, drag across this region in here to create a text frame, let go of the mouse. And in, in true Photoshop fashion, as it does these days, uh, it will use the last font. So I was experimenting with this font for this video and it's put the options in there for me, close to what I'd picked, but it puts uh, Laura Mipson in there. So it puts dummy text into your text frames by default. If you don't have any copy, then you could use that to experiment with. I do know what I want to put in that text frame. So you can just start typing and it replaces the the, the place all the text. So I'm going to call this um, Embrace Life's Little Detours. Um, so I'm just going to um, click four times to select all of the text in that text frame. And then for the size of the text, I'm going to swipe over the size in here, type in 100... I think 100 is about right in there, uh, a little bit bigger. And then for the leading in here, the gaps between the lines, I'm going to set that down to, well, I don't have a preset that's big enough, really. If I choose 72, then the text is going to start crashing into, into the lines. So I'll swipe over that, hold down the shift key and the up cursor key in the keyboard, and just tap that up in 10 point increments. And then let go of the shift key and just tap up in one point increments to just increase that spacing in there. So, I'm happy with the gaps between the first line and the second line. I don't like the gap at the bottom down here. It doesn't look consistent. So I'm going to double click on the word detours and then swipe over the value for the leading of that one and then decrease it by tapping the down cursor key like so. So yeah, I'm kind of happy with that. I'm also happy with the color as well, which if, if I want to change it, I can swipe over the text in the color panel. I can click in the color box in there and it is set to 255 reoccurring for regular in blue. Um, um, or you could type in hexadecimal, which is um, six Fs. I'll click OK. And then with that done, I will go up to the top and click on the tick to apply those edits. Um, then switch to my move tool and then drag and move this around. So it's just there. You'll see that vertical purple line tells me that this text is now centered to the logo underneath. And maybe just because the text layer is active in the layers panel, just use the cursor keys because the move tool is also active, just to nudge it up a little bit and put a little bit of clear space between them. And then once I've got to this point, then you've got your three main components, your, um, your inspirational image, your message, your logo, 
And then what I want to do is I want to convert the text and the logo into a smart object. This will offer you great flexibility. So I'm going to hover my cursor over the layer called Wildcode logo, shift and left click on there to activate those two layers, right click on either one of the layer names in there. And then from the list that pops up, choose convert to smart object. They've now been converted into a smart object. So we haven't lost the ability to edit the text or the logo and edit them independently. They've just been protected in what looks like one layer. So this will offer you huge flexibility when you create other versions of this graphic. So with that done, then I might just click and drag and move them both down a little bit in there just to sit them. There we go. See the horizontal purple line in there that now tells me that that content is centered to the middle of the artboard. And then if I go to the view menu and choose 100%, that's the kind of size. So that's, you know, obviously the quality looks great in there and that's the size it would be posted. I'm working on an iMac 5K screen, so it will look a little bit smaller on screen here in my version of Photoshop. Um, but that's it. That essentially is um, one of your posts potentially done for Twitter. Now, a lot of that work has been done. So what you can do now is if it's a case of saying, OK, we, we need to create something similar for this kind of promotional run for Facebook. All you then have to do is take your selection tool, your move tool from the top of the tools panel, left click on the name of the artboard. And then it depends where you want to position the artboards. I'm going to hold down the space bar just to pan because I want to add another artboard over here. Well, if I just go to any one of the widgets on an, on either one of the four sides, if I left click, that creates another artboard of exactly the same width and height, which is completely empty um, based on the original. Now, that's good, but we'd still have to do a lot of work to put content in there. So actually what you can do is if I go to the edit menu and choose undo new artboard, if I just hold the space bar down to pan with a hand tool and click and drag, if I hover my cursor over that widget on the far right hand side, hold down the Alt or the Option key on the Mac and Alt and left click, creates a duplicate. And then you'll notice this is given a generic name of Tweet01 uh, Copy. So if I again hold down the space bar to pan so I can see both of these on screen. Um, I don't need the Properties panel on screen at the moment, so I'm going to click that away. And then I am going to go to my Layers panel. Notice it's created another copy of that artboard in there, given it a generic name. So I'm going to double click on there. I'm going to call that FB for Facebook underscore zero one and press return. So that's all good. Um, but of course, we need to change the image, uh, cat, the, so the artboard dimensions in here. So again, I can go up to the top. Uh, the artboard's active for Facebook 01. And then for the width in here, well, um, to for a sharing image in your timeline for Facebook, we'll go for a width of 1200. Press return. Notice it extends a little bit, but because we've turned our content to smart objects, we can scale, we can replace them as required. Finally, the height, swipe over that one. The height of this one will need to be 630 pixels at this moment in time for a shared image in a Facebook timeline. And then with that done, I will then click on one of the layers inside of here. So um, the beach image in there uh, is fine. You know, I'm happy with it, but we might want to change it up a little bit so we don't have the same kind of content on all the different platforms. Maybe have a different image, but the same message. So with that one there, active uh, beach 20 in the Facebook uh, uh, artboard in there, I'm actually going to go to file and again, choose place embedded. Takes me back to my folder of uh, pick and mix images. And then from here, well, I'm going to choose, let's go for this one here, Beach 8, and then click on Place. So again, making sure that something in your artboard is active in there will make sure that it puts it into that specific artboard. Again, all the image will be visible, scaled down to fit inside of there proportionately. And this is now 17%. So if I link the width and height together, swipe over that, tap the up cursor key in the keyboard to fill out the width in there. When I've done that, click on the tick and then click and drag and move that up in there so I get that positioned a little bit better. Do you know what? I might actually just want to move that text and the and the message to the side in there. So again, I can click on that. It's in there. Embrace life's little detours. Click and drag. Move that over here like so. And then I have my uh, Facebook post there almost ready to go. But Obviously, we've got a type and a an, and an logo legibility issue in here. Now, this is the great thing because we've now turned these two elements into smart objects. All that I have to do is make sure that that layer 
um, which is in the Facebook O one is active. Go down to effects, choose color overlay. And then in here, I'll just move the dialogue box to the side. It keeps the same content in there. It doesn't edit the content, but we just recolor anything in that smart object effortless and a nice elegant way to be able to change that. So from here, you can uh, notice that it's added a color overlay. The options are shown in here for layer style. And then if I click in the box in there, you can pick whatever color it is. So if you've got a branded color, put the values in here. If you want to just eyeball a color, you can drag the sliders up and down for the hue in there, click in the box to change the colors in there. Um, so more intense saturated color will be at the top right hand side. Uh, low saturation or no saturation there will be the far left hand side and then brighter and darker at the top and the bottom of the box in there so I'm going to go for a kind of an off black a kind of a smoky black color in there maybe a little bit darker and then click OK so we now get our logo and the message in there nice and legible on a different background we've now got a post for Facebook so the final one then is going to be Instagram. So again, I can use the same technique, hold down the space bar and pan, hover over here, left click on the artboard name to activate it. And then again, I can hover my cursor over here, hold down the alt key and left click and create a third artboard. Just move this to the side. So you can do that. You can drag these around wherever you want. As long as you hover your cursor over the artboard name, you can move these around and position them. It will snap to, to match the heights and edges of things inside of your document. But having done that, obviously now go to my layers panel and then go to uh, FB01 copy. Double click on that and call that uh, Insta underscore uh, IMG and then underscore zero one because this is going to be an image post for the main kind of feed in there obviously you can do instagram stories as well and i'll show you one for that next um from here then um really what i need to do is change the size so again if it's not active left click on the name of the artboard in there go up to the top and then this of course needs to be 1080 uh, hit the tab key to go to the height field and type in 1080 and press return so we now get the recommended size for an image that you will post onto your feed on your Instagram in there. And obviously we need to change the artwork. So again, if I, once I've done that, if I click on any one of the sub layers in there, just make my layers panel a little bit bigger, you can collapse these. So if I collapse Facebook and collapse tweet in there, you don't see quite as much content. I can focus on the artboard I'm working on in here. And then from there, well, um, I probably want to, I don't need Beach 20 in here. It's uh, it's actually hidden. So I can actually just hit the delete key in the keyboard to delete that one. And then I don't need the one that was in Facebook either. So I could click on that one and delete the one from uh, the Facebook post um, in there just to keep things tidy and keep file size down, of course. I'll click on Beach 8 and then I'll go to File and I'll choose Place Embedded again. And then this time I'll pick a kind of a nice ocean image in here. So uh, I might go for... Yeah, I'll go for that one. I think Beach 9, click on Place, uh, and, it, and it fits in there. But I do want to make it ever so slightly bigger just to make sure it does fill all of the artboard. So again, I'll hover my cursor over the top right corner, hold down the Alt and the Shift key, and just scale it up a little bit. And then when I'm done, hit the Return key or click on the tick in the Options bar. That now appears in my Instagram image feed post in there. Um, beach 9, I don't need Beach 8 because that's a part of this artboard. If you see here, that's it. Don't need it anymore because it's going to be hidden and then delete that one and then it, when it comes to the uh, artwork here well i can click and drag i can move this around and because it's a smart object you can go to edit choose free transform and scale that as long as i hold down the alt and the shift key i can scale it up in size the text is a vector element so it's scalable it's not going to degrade in quality and so is the logo so if i get it to the size that i want let go of the mouse, let go of the shift and the alt key, hit the return key in the keyboard, and then just position that where I want it, like so. I can always go back to color overlay and double left click, move this to the side. And then in here, click on there. I could always change that to say white in there if I wanted to, a pure brilliant white. Um, when I'm done, click OK. Again, it's legible. Click OK in there. And all the other artboards are left unaffected. So you've got this one asset you can keep reusing again and again in the future. Um, from here then, um, final one is to click on the name Insta01, hover over here, alt left click to create a duplicate, just move this to the side. 
And then for the size of this one, well, this one is going to be a width of 1080, absolutely, but a height for an Instagram story is going to be uh, 1920 and press return. So we've got a, um, a potentially a background for an Instagram story in here. And again, I'll go up to the top, double click on the name and change this to Insta story underscore zero one press return we get a duplicate of all the same content but again if i hide the other contents of the other um artboards makes life a little bit easier and then from here i will click in that uh, artboard and then i need to pick a nice portrait image in here so file place embedded beach six click on place drops it in there of course and again I can go to the top right hand side hold down the shift and the alt key scale that up in size to what I need and then I can press return I can zoom in a little bit in there um, and then in this case I probably want to change the color of the text and the message in there so I can click and drag and move it upwards I could um, go to edit and choose free transform I could scale it down in size again to fit this specific need on this particular artboard in here press return and again if i wanted to go to color overlay double left click and then uh, i go to the color box in here you don't have to pick something from here you could just hover your cursor outside and if i want to sample a green from the palm trees in there i could do that as well but i'm don't click in the box in there click ok in there and you've got your content i mean if you wanted to you could obviously put your messages in the instagram app for the story you don't have to have that on at all you could just go with the background in there if you wanted to but you've got that choice um so now if i just close down the character panel move the layers panel to the side and then if i just space bar to pan you now have a template whereby if it's twitter facebook instagram for main posts or your instagram stories you now have a template so one more thing to show you did you spot the problem i didn't click on beach nine in there and delete it beach nine because it is part of obviously the instagram feed in here for the story um it's not needed and we've now replaced that in there so again just good tidy work in there always essential for photoshop keep file size down um and then with that done um you can if you want to you can change the text and that will update on every single artboard so let me just show you how that works if you decided that actually the message wasn't really hitting it you wanted to change the text in there you could then go to any one of the text layers the smart objects that we've got inside of here and you could edit them so if i choose the one well the one that's visible here for instagram story if i hover my cursor over there um, notice that's the icon for a smart object you double left click on the thumbnail and that opens up the content of that layer in what looks like a new document it's not what it's done is up at the top up here it's now opened up in a separate tab the contents of that smart object you can then zoom in and notice that we have the logo down here just as it was we have the editable text if i double left click now if i wanted to change that copy to be something like um something like that and then once i'm happy with that click on the tick move that down a little bit so we move it to about here like so and then with that done if i now go to file again very confusing because it's not a separate file it's really saving the contents of that layer if i go back down now here to save once it's saved it if i go back to the master the sm templates it's updated in every single one of those in there as well so it's a lovely neat way to be able to edit your content globally inside of one document um, and then change that that message in there if you want to so it's all about trying to get the art what you want at the quality you want and make it nice and efficient i know you're probably at this point thinking well what happens if you just wanted to change the message on one of those artboards that is completely possible but what i need to do first of all is go back a step so if i go back to the tab at the top go to edit and choose undo move edit undo edit type layer and then go to file and then choose save to save the contents of that layer when i go back to the master file they've been updated so what we need to do in here then is go back to this one close this one down just so we were trying to be nice and clear about what it is that we're editing in this document now from here i'll have to go to if it's say the instagram story one that i want to change in here so if it's just this one then what you can do is you can hover your cursor over that smart object right click on it and you can choose 
new smart object via copy. And what that will do is it will create an exact copy of that in exactly the same place. And then what I can do in here is I can right click on that and color code it just to let if anybody else edits this know that that is it on its own. It's not linked to the other smart object. I could even double left click on there and just call that um, unlinked title and then click on the original and delete it because I don't need it. And now if I want to edit that, I can hover over the thumbnail, double left click and then zoom in and make edits to this, which will only affect the Instagram story version. So again, with this one, type in surfs up and then click on the tick, move this down like so, and then maybe just scale the logo as well. So scale that down, command T or control T on a PC and then scale it down a touch and then move that up. And then when I'm done, click on the tick, go to file, which is really saving the layer and then choose save. And then if I click back, you'll notice that that's changed and none of the others have. So I could go from here. I could drag and move that around if I want to. I could even transform that. Notice it will stick with the original dimensions of the uh, of the two layers in there. So I had a bit of room at the top up in there, but I can move that around when I'm happy with that. Go to the top, click on the tick, and then I can zoom out. And with that done, then if I go up to the top and just close down that uh, expanded opened uh, smart object, once you're finished, I'll go to file. I'll choose save as and save this as a template. Um, so in there, I've got the name there. We add in for the new doc and dialog box. So it's SM templates, got to save it as a PSD and then click on save. And then from here, you want to get them obviously out of Photoshop and online. So you go to file, you choose export, and then you can choose artboards to files with this one. Then when the dialog box pops up on screen, you pick the place where you want to output them. So you click on browse. I will always have in here an export folder and keep them separate from the original artwork. So double click on exports in there in the same place, the posting folder on the desktop or it could be a network somewhere. Click on open to define that as the place where I want to put the export social media content. What do you want as a prefix? So um, it could be the name of the template. It could be, for example, something like um, August underscore so you know which month these are for and then what it will do on the end of um, the prefix in there it will put the artboard names for those so it's a nice way to be able to organize them we want to export um, just the contents inside the artboards um, if I had just one artboard active it may be that I could just choose to export a single artboard but I don't want to and then um, what do I want to do in terms of file type I want to export as a, a JPEG file because these are predominantly photographic content always set the quality to maximum of 12 because they're going to get compressed a little bit when they're uploaded to social media. And then with that done, um, click on run and it will, you'll see things flash away on screen. Photoshop will export those out. It will even tell you that it's export them out as well. And then if I go to uh, file and choose open, you, we should see in there. If I go to the exports folder, there we have it. All of those files exported out. If I change the name in there to list, you'll see that it's put the month, an underscore and then it's put the name of the artboards inside of there like so so um there you go folks that's how you can create a template to expedite the process of getting to social media on different platforms in one photoshop document removing those pressure points linking those uh, those messages and your logos into the artwork if you've enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up and until next time folks farewell <laughs>